Hello and welcome to this video where we will be discussing the book, Manufacturing Consent, by Noam Chomsky and Edward S. Herman. Published in 1988, this book has had a significant impact on how we understand the media and its role in shaping our understanding of the world. In this video, we will explore the key ideas presented in the book and discuss its relevance in today's society. Chomsky and Herman's Manufacturing Consent explores the relationship between the mass media and the state. The book argues that the media is not a neutral entity but instead, operates as a propaganda system serving the interests of those in power, often suppressing alternative viewpoints that do not align with dominant power structures. The book is a must-read for anyone who is interested in media studies, journalism, and politics. What is Manufacturing Consent? So, what exactly is manufacturing consent? Put simply, it is the process by which the media shapes our understanding of the world by selectively presenting information to us. The authors argue that the media acts as a propaganda system, serving the interests of those in power rather than providing objective information to the public. The media's role in shaping public opinion has always been a topic of interest to scholars, and manufacturing consent provides a comprehensive analysis of the ways in which the media operates as a tool of the state. The authors argue that the media's portrayal of events, issues, and people is often biased towards the interests of the ruling elite, ignoring or marginalizing perspectives that challenge the status quo. To illustrate this concept, the authors provide numerous examples of how the media has been used to promote certain agendas. For instance, during the Vietnam War, the media portrayed the conflict as a battle between democracy and communism, rather than an invasion of a sovereign nation by a foreign power. This helped to drum up support for the war among the American public. The authors also argue that the media has a significant impact on how we perceive issues such as poverty, crime, and foreign policy. By selectively presenting information that supports certain viewpoints and ignoring information that contradicts them, the media creates a distorted picture of reality. The Five Filters of the Propaganda Model To understand how manufacturing consent works, the authors propose the propaganda model which consists of five filters that shape the media's presentation of information. These filters include ownership, advertising, sourcing, flack, and anti-communism. Ownership refers to the fact that the media is largely owned by a small number of corporations, which have a vested interest in promoting their own interests. This leads to a homogenization of the media, where a narrow range of viewpoints is presented to the public. These corporate owners are often part of the elite and have close ties to political and economic power structures, which leads to the suppression of information that goes against their interests. The result is a media that is less diverse and less able to represent the views of ordinary people. Advertising is another filter, as the media is dependent on advertisers for revenue. This can lead to self-censorship, as the media is hesitant to report on issues that might upset their advertisers. As a result, the media tends to prioritize the interests of advertisers over the interests of the public, which can lead to the suppression of critical or challenging information. This is especially true in areas where there are significant financial interests, such as the pharmaceutical industry, where critical reporting can harm the interests of drug companies. Sourcing refers to the fact that the media relies on certain sources of information, such as government officials or corporate spokespeople, for their news. This can lead to a bias in favor of these sources and a neglect of alternative viewpoints. Often, these sources have their own interests to promote, and the media can be complicit in spreading their messages without proper scrutiny. Moreover, journalists are often restricted in their access to information and sources, which makes it difficult to present a complete picture of events. Flack refers to the negative response the media receives when they report on issues that go against the interests of those in power. This can take the form of attacks from politicians or interest groups, which can make the media hesitant to report on controversial issues. 
These attacks can be both personal and professional, and can include threats to job security or legal action. This leads to a chilling effect on the media, where they avoid topics that might be seen as controversial or difficult to report on. Anti-communism is the final filter, as the media has historically been biased against communism and other leftist movements. This bias can lead to a demonization of these movements, even when they are acting in the best interests of the public. This bias is often ingrained in the culture of the media, and can be difficult to overcome. Overall, the propaganda model provides a useful framework for understanding how the media operates and how it can be used to manipulate public opinion. While the model has its limitations, it provides a valuable starting point for thinking critically about the media and its role in society. Criticisms of Manufacturing Consent While manufacturing consent has been widely praised for its insights into the media, it has also received criticism. Some have argued that the book is too simplistic and that it ignores the diversity of viewpoints present in the media. They argue that the media is not a monolithic entity, and that different outlets and journalists can have different agendas and motivations. Others have pointed out that the book focuses too heavily on the American media, neglecting the experiences of other countries. While the book's analysis of the American media is insightful, it is important to remember that the media operates differently in different countries and cultures. Additionally, some have accused the authors of being overly pessimistic about the media's ability to provide objective information. They argue that while the media may have its flaws, it still serves an important role in informing the public. Despite these criticisms, Manufacturing Consent remains an important and influential book that has changed the way we think about the media. The book's analysis of the media as a propaganda system continues to resonate with scholars, journalists, and activists today. Conclusion So, in conclusion, Manufacturing Consent is a book that has had a significant impact on our understanding of the media. It provides valuable insights into how the media shapes our understanding of the world and the ways in which it can be used to promote certain agendas. While the book has received criticism, its message is still relevant today, as the media continues to play a powerful role in shaping public opinion. We encourage you to read the book and think critically about the media you consume. By understanding the ways in which the media can be used to manipulate us, we can become more informed and independent thinkers. Thank you for watching this video on Manufacturing Consent. We hope you found it informative and thought-provoking. Please feel free to leave a comment below with your thoughts and opinions on the topic. Don't forget to like and subscribe to our channel for more great content like this.